so um, I would ask, well, I will read the question and I would ask uh, some of our experts, maybe Paolo, to reply to this question. Um, first question is, does open air envisage to sell its services or will they be free forever? Okay, can you hear me? Yes, yes. So good afternoon, everybody. Um, thanks for the question. Yeah, well, sorry, uh, uh, Paolo is the technical coordinator of Open Air. That's why he is the, the best person to reply to this question. Um, okay, so the idea is the following. Um, of course, every service we provide, uh, well, every service in the world of open science has a cost, has a price and somebody has to pay for it. And of course, the person who was supposed to pay for it are not the uh, researchers. So we, have, we, are, we are all taxpayers, basically, so we should find a sustainable way to keep the services going on forever and for a very low price. So the idea is not to be on the market to gain money, of course, but to be on the market to provide the service, as any public service would do. So the services will have a price, but this will not uh, be, be visible to, to the researchers, of course. So the idea, for example, is to have uh, the member states to provide fees, uh, to uh, have access to the services, or to very specific uh, actors in the range of open air to pay for such services. For example, institutions, uh, if they need, for example, specific monitoring of their outcome, or funders. That's the other option that we have. Or uh, at the end of the line, also research infrastructures, which are today willing to monitor what their, their activities in terms of scientific production. Uh, the idea is to put a price that, of course, will cover for the operational cost. Uh, so in principle, the, the more we are, the less we pay. That's the, uh, uh, of course, with proportion to scalability and uh, all these other things. Uh, but yeah, that's the idea below. Thanks, Paolo. If you have any, uh, if some of the participants have has any other comments on this, please uh, don't hesitate to ask. Okay, I'm going to the second question. When harvesting research data items from data repositories, will OpenAir make a distinction from curated data sets from non-curated ones? I think this is another question from um, from Paolo, uh, and I think this is a question originating from the Q and A session yesterday. Yes, uh, it's a very good question. This is something that we would like to do, uh, of course, but it's uh, today is not really possible. So we, unless we're going to have, uh, there are initiatives on that sense, in on that on that direction that are willing somehow to certify the quality of repositories, and to make this certification or degree of certification available through uh, registries. And this is a very interesting initiative that are going on, but as far as I know, they're not really mature. So there's nothing that today uh, can officially uh, and with uh, an authority as an authority let us. Uh, express an opinion on the quality of the uh, repositories. What we can do is, on the other side, make sure the metadata is rich enough. And uh, this is why we have the guidelines, the open air guidelines. The open air guidelines are supposed to align and make sure that participating repositories are somehow compliant to some minimal level of quality. Although even this is quite hard and frankly, it's it's really hard for us to say this repository does it better than another. Okay, so uh, it's an open issue. Today we're not making such a difference, but me this may be well the case in the future as we hope. Thanks a lot, Paolo. That was a tricky one. Okay, so I just went in the wrong direction. Uh, Next question is a bit long. Um, so, are project officers supposed to use OpenAir and the participant portal to check the availability of publications? And are you in contact with project officers to inform them and train them on these matters? Um, 
Emily, I see you are among the participants. Would you like to say something on this? Okay, maybe no. <laughs> uh, it's okay, I will try to, to, to reply to this question. Um, well, um, I see you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I can okay. Think. <laughs> okay, so please okay, go on. Okay, good. <laughs> Thanks. So, um, in open air, we. Um, Um, we uh, uh, contact Horizon 2020 project, so EPI um, NOAD, that is our National Open Access Task, uh, is in contact with uh, project officers and we send them information about what they need to do to comply with open access uh, requirements and how they can check their um, publications on our portal on a yearly basis. So we contact the project uh, officer twice a year. Uh, and there was a second part of the question. Um, yeah, so we inform them and train them. Um, and of course, open air, um, we automatically um, transfer our information to the participants' portal. So you will see that the information that is on open air will also automatically appear in the participants' portal so that project officers can uh, simply uh, check in the participants' portal if all their publications are there. Uh, I don't know if you want to. Um, uh, say something else about it, uh, Ilaria, if that answers the question. Can I add something? Yes, please. It's just um, uh, not a minor e detail from the technical side, but um, b basically, when you are when you go to the, the participant portal, you are prompted with a list of publications suggested by OpenAir. And you can validate them, so confirm those that you believe belong to your project and those that you believe don't belong to, to your project or can be related with it. Uh, now, uh, we realized that uh, the same person going to the Partissimo portal uh, at different times uh, tends to reject those publications that he has, he, she has accepted in previous stages. And the reason may be because uh, he, she believes to have already reported those publications and that there is no need to do that again. So the, the, the portal in that sense is not very clear. So if you reject it, then this is going to be rejected. So we are going to have a feedback in open air that tells us if our uh, mechanism to associate publications to projects are uh, uh, fine and if they work well. And in those cases, we get back a rejection. Then we go and check and we realize that the paper actually declares the project in the acknowledgement, so our statement was good, but the project uh, coordinator for some reason, or a person on the, he, his, her behalf, uh, has rejected it. And we believe this is due to this uh, probably misunderstanding that the portal doesn't really um, pass through in the proper way. So please accept every time <laughs> if you are project coordinators and spread the voice around all publications that are associated to your project even though you think you've uh, accepted them or validated them before that's very important thanks Paolo. there's a comment from moita on this and um, that project officer might refer to the ec's project officer so uh, project officers sitting in Brussels that are responsible for monitoring how the project is going. Uh, to my knowledge, uh, we don't have training specifically for project officers at the EC, but if this is a need, I think we can easily set up a training program uh, to enable the European Commission to fully exploit what open air can offer um, to, to them to make their life easier. Okay, let me see if I remember. Okay, what was the right <laughs> way to go? I think this is another. Okay, so sorry, uh, related to um, the previous question, 
there's a comment from Marianne uh, regarding the training. And it says that DCC and um, through the Foster Project provides training for the EC project officer. So um, it's just a matter of maybe better circulation of the information, and we can definitely uh, promote these training courses from Foster on the Open Air Portal better than we are actually doing. Okay, um, there's another question that's for Paolo. A lot of technical questions for you today. Um, the metadata sent by Open Air to the EU participant portal cannot be modified on the portal, though they are always not clean. Uh, could you allow for modification? And I think this relates partially to um, your comment before. Yeah, this is in the roadmap. So today what you can do is to add project information. Uh, what you can do is uh, when you claim uh, so the, the, there is a distinction between the metadata that we collect from external data sources like repositories. Uh, for this information, you as a user, you find it on the portal, on the open air portal, and you can only uh, add links from these objects to other objects. Then you have uh, the records that you are claiming. That's what we say. So basically, you're going to the portal and you're providing a DOI. And uh, through the DOI, we fetch the metadata from Crossref, data site, or whatever. And there you can modify the metadata because this is metadata that you are, as a user, inserting. So uh, if there is any change you would like to apply, this may be a way to go. So you, even, even though the publication is already in open air, then you, if the publication has a DOI, you can claim it and complete the metadata. So our deduplication process basically will take that into account and uh, try to gather as much information as possible. Uh, the trend is to give more trust to the information provided by the user. Um, and so this may be the right solution. Um, in the future, we are trying, we are willing to, in, it's in the roadmap, to allow changes of any kind to any information that, you, that we have in the portal. This means that user can add claims again, so overrides basically of information whenever they believe this is uh, doable or worth doing. For that, we need to introduce the research community dashboard and of course experts that are able to inspect these uh, updates of the records and uh, validate them, so allow them or not allow them. At the moment, this is not done because we alone cannot uh, handle, let's say, the wave of possible updates that would be provided. Uh, we don't have, we, we need to distribute this uh, and monitoring, this supervision uh, job. And this is what we are applying, what we are thinking of doing with the resource communities when they use the resource community dashboard. Thanks, Paul. I think it was pretty clear. Uh, let's go to the following question, uh, which is another question related to the EU participants portal. Um, on the portal, one cannot tick both boxes on green and gold open access. Uh, are you in touch with them to have this change so that it complies with EU obligations on open access? How about this is again for you, if you have the answer to this. We, we are in touch with them, so we can certainly provide feedbacks, feedback of that kind. Um, I'm not sure I understand the question. So why, uh, why being able to take both green and gold, um, we would flying, uh, otherwise we wouldn't. I ju I'm just guessing, uh, because I'm not the, the person who asked for this question, but um, I think that one uh, research product could have multiple versions, for example, one deposited in a repository and the full one published in an open access journal. So this might be the case. 
Um, so you, you basically want to say that you have two versions of the same article published on the green or gold open access. Yeah, and, and if OpenAir harvests both versions, so one coming from a repository and the yeah. other coming from Crossref or Metadata, for example, then you should be able to see both of them in the new participants portal and also be able to, to submit both of them because they are, well, different versions of the same thing. That's I see. Okay. Yes, I know that okay. explains. I can clearly see the issue. Okay, thank you. That's good feedback. I will uh, definitely write uh, an email for that. Okay, we finished the, the questions that have been asked through Mentimeter, but I got an offline question about um, the number of repositories now compliant to uh, the new version, the latest version of the guidelines. Uh, that have been re released uh, earlier this year. Uh, do we already know um, some figures about it? You do mean the 4.0 guidelines? Yeah, exactly. Uh, because they're not yet, uh, let's say, official. <laughs> okay. No, well, they will be this month, I think. Um, so th there is no repository out there that because it's uh, not released officially yet, so, okay. Yes. That's a good explanation. I guess so. <laughs> That's it. Okay, but all resources about the, the new guidelines, uh, webinars and uh, description pieces are available on the Open Air portal for whoever asked me this question. Um, just let me reload the page in case something happened in the meanwhile. No, they are just fine. Um, does any one of the participants have other questions for either the networking team or the, the technical team? Don't be shy, this is a unique opportunity to directly talk to the people that are building open air. Okay, if no other questions are arising from the participants, I would like to thank you for, um, for attending, uh, for asking your questions. I hope that we were able to, to reply to them uh, in a satisfying way for you. And the recordings of the, this Q&A session will be made available next week on the Open Air portal. Thank you all for joining and have a nice rest of the afternoon. Bye-bye. Thanks.